Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to We Play Dota 2 League's Phase 2. We are well into the draft. It's game one of Team Liquid versus Mouse Quantic Flipside. I'm LD. He's Lumi. Lumi, this is a speed draft because we got into it a tiny bit late. The first pick went to Flipside. They picked up a Treant, the quick reply from Liquid, Elder Titan, Prophet. Then Flipside goes back for the Treant's old friend, the Weaver. We haven't seen much tree lately. Uh, in the second stage, Liquid go for a Rubik, a Gyro. Decent amount of split push, good team fight, pretty versatile lineup. Flipside, Puck, Clockwork for them. A lot of control on this team, a bit lacking on damage. And now in the final stage, we see a lot of supports getting banned out. Well, we're well into the draft, but what what's jumping out at you? All right, so Flipside open with a tree, and then they pick up three very self-sufficient kind of your solo heroes. So with Living Armor, none of these heroes should actually die. And that really allows Trian to do whatever he wants, which is majorly pulling in the early game. And then they're going to pick up round of draft with another support. So what they really want to do early game is make sure that Trian gets his pull camp off. So whatever amount of sentry you need to do, whatever amount of early game zoning you need to do, make sure that you do not let those Trians to block the camp. Because if you do, that Trian Protector is getting EXP, and that means more living armor just for everybody else. At the same time, it's pretty hard for Trian to deal with Nature's Prophet's Trian. Doesn't right. have a whole lot of damage, he's pretty slow, he's a melee hero. I think so this is where Crystal Maiden, or some other really high... Yeah kind of bursty support that could nuke down those screens come into play. Otherwise, Quakefa is going to be able to do a lot of work. Now, for Liquid, they run the Elder Titan mid for Bulba, so we know he's taking that mid. Quakefa will be the offlane, basically two-position Nature's Prophet, uh, even though he's in the offlane, getting a lot of farm later on. That'll be a TC Gyro for the safe lane, uh, and then the Rubik probably going to... 100% uh, no, Fluff and stuff. Fluff? Really? This is his favorite hero, or one of his favorite heroes of all really? time. So. It will surprise me greatly they, if you let him go. They banned Chen on flip side, so they think Flup's playing uh, something else here. Something like that? I guess that's possible. Yeah, maybe if they pick Enchantress, then Wei Tu's going to be playing it. We'll see. Then he'll just say, be sad, he can't play both yeah. heroes. But flip side go back for a vengeful spirit here. Ten so, very interesting draft from flip side. Their two supports are not great Five at zoning, not remaining. particularly good at killing the Treants, but they give you a lot of just... I don't know. They're annoying supports. Yeah, they are. I, I think that's a great way to describe it. I mean, Ventral Spirit gives you so much utility in the mid game as well. And also, Weaver, Puck, Clockwork, these are already very difficult to he kill hero. Add Living Armor, Overgrowth, and Swap on top of that. So, I, I mean, how do you get kills on these guys? Do you know if the, the, the bonus damage from Natural Order, that's not like a separate instance, right? So that doesn't... What do you mean bonus damage? Uh, you know how it makes things do more damage? It's... That's one, it's all part of one damage. Yeah, instance, right? it's just basically removing your magic resist. Okay, so. so it's not going to be especially good against Living Armor. No, it's not. I mean, it's good, of right, course, because right. it's natural order. But They'll go back for a Sand King here, Team Liquid Will. So okay. two fairly greedy support picks, but they, it gives them some much-needed lockdown, I guess. And before that, all they really had was a Rubik Lift. Now Liquid, very solid, well-rounded draft. I'm personally favoring Liquid's draft a little bit here. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like it's just the more versatile lineup. Flip side... Somewhat more reliant on having a really explosive start. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with that. Right now, you're looking at you know Puck, Face Shift, and then Blink, as well as Sakuchi to kind of get yourself out of any harm's way. But if you look at Rubik and Sanking, once you get Blink Dagger on either of these heroes, Team Liquid have instant initiations from supports. Yeah. That is actually very important to say. And then, you, of course, Koifa is going to get you a Cypher Vice. So if it goes late, Team Liquid's got that completely on lockdown. And it's like you said, they have the early game, they have good lane, they have good roaming. Team Liquid's lineup is very, very versatile. Well, I'm going to let you introduce Flipside after I go through Liquid, because some of them are not using their real names. Okay, well, I don't be... know who they are. Do you know? Okay, no, start looking them up on the profiles now. I'll introduce Team Liquid. <laughs> what is this? Liquid on the dire side. They're probably pro private profiles, but that is the player's own damn fault. We'll figure it out later, I guess. Uh, it is going to be... Well, I guess, yeah, they're discussing servers. I don't think we're going to have a remake, uh, but we'll introduce Team Liquid right now on the dire side. Game one of a best of three. Loser drops down to play EG. The winner moves on to face Na'Vi. Uh, and both of those matches will be best of three. But we have TC handling the gyrocopter. Carry Hero, he's very accustomed to playing. Way too sexy. Former Dignitas member. Going to be on the Sand King. In the mid lane comes Bulba, the progenitor of the Natural Order build. He'll be playing your Elder Titan. That puts Koikva onto the Nature's Prophet. And uh, he will most likely be in the jungle. He's been pulled some clarity, so we'll be rushing that Midas almost certainly. Fluff and stuff on the Rubik. Headed towards the offlane with some Observer Wards for now, but I imagine he'll be in that defensive tri-lane just doing a bit of pulling. Okay, so I did not hear a single word That's you said fine. throughout all of that because I was doing some detective work. 
Thank you, so Detective Luminous. On on Puck is just exists. This is a player. Okay. Name exists. I don't know Stand who he in, is. Stand in. Okay. So QQ uh, on Clockwork that is Miggle. Okay. Meanwhile, zero underscore zero or the uh, sh surprise shock face that is Gold Black. Okay. So he is on his Astro Hero Tree and Protector, and then we have Sock on Weaver, and then Effing Mad on Bench. All right. I feel like I'm a little out of touch here. Did did God Black rejoin the team? No, I think he is standing. Or unless, is he a stand -in? Unless maybe he did rejoin the team. I, I have know. not. I have not cast Mass Quantic Flipside since the group stages. Uh, well, actually, I don't even think I cast no, him yeah, in the group stages. Yeah, I wasn't here. Uh, Gots and I did it. So. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had the pleasure to cast this team, and they were actually doing very well in the group stages. They were. They were able did they, to. They finished first in their group, I think. No, they finished second. I think Speed Gaming finished first. Or okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Kaipi was the one team that they lost to. Yeah. But uh, they've done very well. So. Now someone's asking if Exist is Fanta. Is I don't think so. Yeah, yeah it's a that was player. about. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Dota two mid player. Okay, German. Are they? Do you know if if he's just not able to play today, or Probably. is he possibly leaving the team? Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna lie. Out of all four of the teams out of in Group B, which is Team Liquid, Flipside, Navi as well as Alliance, or not Alliance, uh, Navi as well as EG. This is a team that I know the least. So yeah, I they've been changing players. They might be using stand-ins this game, or maybe we just haven't seen them mm -hmm. with a settled roster. I imagine the chat might know better than us in this case, at least. Since yeah, since they probably watch other tournaments uh, from other broadcasts more. But yeah. we one, we're too busy casting. One thing I could say is that in in the past, uh, you know, when Go Black is on the team, or when Miggles on the team, they're the captains. But I really like this team a lot more now. Effing Mad is the mad genius here. Um, I really like his drafts. It's it's not your standard stuff. I think he has taken quite a bit of Go Black when they're drafting together mm -hmm. back in their old team. It's it's very weird stuff. Um, this is a team that did the Tree and Protector and Abaddon dual support that did absolutely <laughs> that did absolutely nothing. I was like, how how's this lineup actually works? Yeah. And they just keep pushing tower because you actually can't stop the push. You can't kill anybody, and yeah. they just right click your buildings. Yeah. So these are the some weirder stuff. I think they did Drow one one game as well. I think that's where Envy actually took it, took his draft from. I'm not exactly sure on that, but I think I've seen this team ran Draw Ranger as well. So, or was yeah, it Draw the, Ranger? There was one team that ran a, that was running a, a Draw Ranger. I'm not sure which one it is. So it was running okay. a Draw Ranger strategy, and Navi went aggressive trying with Riki Wisp. What was that team? Because I think that team actually got knocked out in the group. So was that Scary Faces? Yeah, Scary Faces. Or something yeah. Like that. So they were running a Draw Ranger strategy as well. But, okay. Uh, I'm not sure who quote-unquote, came up with it first. but Either way, uh, coming into this match, Liquid is on a bit of a... Uh, it's, they haven't played that many games since their new roster, but mm -hmm. they've been hot since they since we've last seen them. They took a game off of Alliance in the group stages in this tournament, 1-1. They beat Na'Vi 2-1 mm -hmm. in, uh, what was the tournament? The Champions League, uh, which was streamed on Daily Motion. So a lot of you may not have watched it, but heard the games were pretty impressive for them. Uh, and I know, I'm sure they've played other matches, but those are the two results that jump out to me. So... This is a team that, at least so far, has been able to hang with Navi and Alliance. What more can you ask for? I actually think Liquid uh, it is... It looks like we are going to have ourselves a quick remake here, okay. so might have a bit of a delay. I actually think that Team Liquid is top three, if not top two, Western team. I know that's saying a lot, for, especially for... That's how a lot of people felt going into TI2 as well. Or, sorry, TI3. Like, in the months leading for up to Team it. Liquid? Yeah. Yeah. Not right before it, but more like if you go back to like around G1 League, right when they qualified for that mm -hmm. event, before they went to the LAN. Right. People were saying Liquid is a top three Western team. Yeah. But they didn't really... Well, they qualified for G1, so that's a very safe yeah. assumption. But then since then, they, they didn't quite perform up to that level. I felt I, I feel very sad uh, being, you know, Fluff's friend that they always do well, not close to TI. You know what I mean? Like, remember... They don't get hot at the right time. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Like, remember Complexity slash Fire... Yeah, they had like a ridiculous ninety x percent win rate. Which but it was like it was like around like November and yeah. like March or something. I right, think. having a ridiculous win streak like that gives you a TI invite for sure. Yeah, but you know, top eight versus top then you got to go play at the event. Exactly. Well, they so. definitely it's a team that's it's a core lineup that's improved a lot though. You look at they went to TI two, mm -hmm. really disappointing results for them. But okay, yeah, uh, they started in the winners bracket and then they got just they had that Zenith game where Ice 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 just went ham when. Uh, Exhort Invoker. Yeah, yeah. Got knocked down, got eliminated the next match. But you look at TI3, and they actually made a, a small run in the loser's bracket. So mm -hmm. uh, you'll have, we'll have to see if that kind of builds into something more for this team going forward. And more importantly, if you look at the Liquid roster, I mean, I think Fluff and stuff, 
uh, Boba, Koifa, these are still relatively young names compared to like Loda, Burning, you know, all the yeah. legends. But they have experience. This is like the third years all. I, I imagine this is going to be another TI team. Yeah. And that's going to be the third appearance at TI. So. It remains seen, but if they keep this up, right. certainly they'll be at TI the I, way they're playing right now. I would not envision a TI4 without Team Liquid. Although, if these teams tank for the next eight months, then, you know. Yeah. And also, if you've been to the last international, I'm sure, and you have a similar roster, that's going to weigh in just a little bit to the mm -hmm. invites. But who knows what goes on in the mysterious mind of Ice Frog. Okay, seems like seems like we are loading, but uh, we're waiting for one spectator. It's probably the Chinese caster, because... Okay, no, it's, it's not. August. Whoever August is. And I don't say that uh, any... No disrespect to the Chinese casters. They just seem to have a lot of trouble loading whenever I'm casting games with them. So. All right, guys, we have loaded in. Uh, we can offer ourselves back into the, the AP remake of game one. It's going to be Team Liquid versus Flipside. Best of three. Winner moves on to play Na'Vi in a best of three. Winner of that, guaranteed top four placement in this $25,000 tournament. The loser drops down to play EG, and that match happens immediately after this. Okay, so for anybody that's joining the game, we may, may, maybe miss a pick and ban analysis. Team Liquid working with a very well versatile lineup, good at basically every single stage of the game. The thing that jumps out at me personally is that both Rubik and Sankin gives you instant initiations once they pick up the Blink Dagger, right? Which is really good against uh, majority of the hero that Flipside's got. Now their supports are, I wouldn't say Liquid supports are bad early on, but they're not. They get a lot stronger with yeah, levels. Yeah, they're they're very mediocre. And I guess the big question is, will Flipside be able to s slow them down, or do they even look to punish them? Because you generally don't want to let a support Rubik and Sand King, Sand King duo just freely stack and pull. I, I really think this is where TC kind of somewhat, uh, I don't want to say outdrafted. Uh, Effing Man, he has really exploited the weakness of Tree and Protector. Tree and Protector isn't a support that you could go, let's say, offensive trialing, for example. Well, you can. It's Liquid actually did that TI, but it goes very poorly. Yeah, it, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> so I think they did it in the G1 League as well. I think it's against one of the Chinese teams. In any case, because you can go offensive trialing, and Ventral Spirit is an okay roaming support, but you, she's not going to go for a solo roam, right? Right. Because of that, your support Rubik, your Sanking, if they want to, they could be jungling two man, uh, or they could be roaming two man. They have a lot more freedom to do whatever they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll introduce our teams again. This is an AP remake of a CM draft. It's game one of a best of three team Liquid versus, I'm not sure what to call them. I'll call them Mouse Quantic Flipside. Not sure if they're just Flipside now, but either way. We have TC on your gyrocopter, way too sexy, going to be playing that support Sand King towards the middle lane, Bulba, going for that natural order Astral Spirit build, I am sure, on the Elder Titan, Fluff and Stuff, the Mastermind, along with TC on that support Rubik, and then towards the offlane will be the lone non-North American member of this team who's been making quite an, an impression mm -hmm. since joining the team, I mean, Koikva. He, he's already quite great, uh, a great player before joining the team. Yeah, now. he was doing great for Mouse, but yeah. he's really fit in well with Liquid since joining. All right, meanwhile, on the Radiant side, it's going to be Effing Matt on the Ventral Spirit. Sock is going to be playing that Weaver. We have Go Black, I think, standing in and perhaps joining the team. Not exactly too sure. Playing the Treant Protector. Exists a German solo mid player playing that Puck. And then we're going to see uh, Miggle going up back up top on Clockwork. So the one thing to talk about in this mid matchup is that most of the time, Puck is really good at dodging nukes with his face. Can't dodge Astral. Can't that dodge Astral because it will just... He'll just sit there with you. it. Yeah, stand you, stand under your yeah, face. Even if you dodge it, it'll just hit you a second later. So it's kind of pointless. And that's going to make this a tough matchup. And then you look at the base damage that an Elder Titan will have. And normally Puck, especially getting pulled and Puck going... Puck does have 63. So Yeah, but that's before the Astral giving additional damage to this Elder Titan. There see Bulba throwing it out. And uh, once it returns, right up to 54 plus 19. So... Oh. He'll be getting his last hits. Puck is not going to be able to shut down the Elder Titan. With that said, the Puck is working with Living Armor, so that's, you know, somewhat of the most imbalanced thing. And actually, is it, do you think, have you actually read the changelog for Treant? No. Okay, so his mana cost jumped from 25 to 50, so double, basically. But the cooldown got decreased by half. So basically, you can use it more often, but it's a little more expensive. Yeah, I, I, I personally actually think that's a buff. But I'm, I'm. He has a pretty small. It's 50 is a decent amount of mana though. It like, is. If you're it, spamming this you thing, you just have to be select. Oh, the courier is it gonna die? Yeah, the courier is gonna come in right now. The golden Roshan courier, Boba feeds it. That's oh, no. absolutely Boba, huge. Maybe looking to turn this around with the He's not gonna get the kill. He's gonna right? have some extra damage here. But yeah, there's an, a fresh orb exists with living armor. There you go. Boba. Oh no. That's... I'm gonna chalk it as a lane loss. Like I. He's not gonna get a bottle crow. More importantly, for himself and he, his... yeah, he didn't. He was no, he got his bottle. Right, so but at he's least not gonna he have the bottle the rooms. 
Um, but the one thing with Elder Titan is once you get your uh, your spirit as well as natural order both to level four, every time you use the spirit, the range creep dies. So okay, it makes it so that you can just push the lane harder than almost any other hero. But for now, he may have a bit of trouble, and you can already see Effing Mad. They know the courier's dead. They'd love to secure these runes. We'll check the bottom rune. Puck should have the edge going to the top, and the rune does spawn top. Bulba really needs to get this, but I don't know if he's going to be able to. Yeah, yeah it looks like he will. And, and also, I just want to say that that courier kill means an like, instant upgrade on the courier for one of the supports on the radiant side, or a quick boot for a vengeful spirit, perhaps. So this is a huge, huge deal. And if, if any of the radiant carries are rushing for Midas, well, they just got helped out by 175 as well. And as for flip side right now, they are running the awfully clockwork. He's level two. You look at the nature's prophet who now is about to rotate into the jungle, I imagine, Koikfa. City level 2 as well, so the offlane's trading pretty evenly. Uh, I do want to keep, keep an eye on our supports levels, and what I'm noticing are the Radiant supports have gotten jack squat this far. Goblack has gotten the healing creeps, which is a really annoying camp to try and kill off as a Trian. And that's very slow. Just That just completely goes back to Koifa, blocking the camp repeatedly. Yeah. And that's kind of what we said, if you block against a Trian, he is actually useless. So he's trying to jungle his way to 2 on this camp, and he's just barely doing it. I think he's going to try to make it pull, and... Nope. Oh, missed the stack. Missed that, the stack. that hurts even more. Yeah. Uh, and you can use you can use Living Armor on yourself and, and help helps you jungle a bit, but Quakefa right back at it with yeah, those flash trees. Yeah, He blocked it at the three-minute mark as well. I'm so. not sure how he did it because he was in his own jungle. Well, I think he, he went base. He summoned Trance and sent them out well before uh, well before he got there, I guess. Yeah. So now Quakefa, he's done a lot of economic damage here. And I think I don't I don't know that that fully makes up for the courier death. But it doesn't. It goes a long way. Yeah, you compare that to the liquid supports, level three on Sand King and Rubik already. That is just absolutely amazing jungling and pulling. Is Sand King gonna be stacked? No, it looks like it got blocked. I'm not sure whether uh, Migo has been doing a good job manually body blocking it. It seems like he is doing that just now. So, yeah, you gotta limit the liquid support because you're not getting too much on your own. Yeah. Uh, for me, looking at the the farm right now, it's. Fairly, the two big, the two highest farmers are, well, uh, it looks like they're basically on flip side. You have your gyrocopter dead even, but then you look at these other heroes. The supports on Liquid getting farm. They're off laner on the Prophet. You know he's going to get a lot more later on. Mm -hmm. And uh, already actually TPing. Uh, can't say his TP. Thought about going bottom and not going to. So I think Liquid are getting more off the map, despite the courier kill. Yeah, what they are losing right now is a ton of experience on the bot tower, though. Fluff and stuff has not rotated, or Sand King has not rotated here. Prophet has not rotated here, so right now Sock and Effing Man is just kind of ramming on this tower, and they're not really feeling any repercussion of it. Meanwhile, Sock and Effing Man, yeah, continue to work on the tower. Liquid going for the trade here as well. There is a no glyph available for their team, and we can look at the the dire side and see that they do have a glyph. So the first tower, well, this tower is a lot lower, so it'll be a pretty even trade as far as the towers go. Liquid are devoting three heroes to this. Only two on the side of Mouse Quantic flip side, but nonetheless, this bottom tower is going to fall. Yeah. Well, it comes down to once a tower is falling down, who's going to get more free farm? On one side, you have Gyrocopter, who's fairly gankable, and on the other side, you could just leave the Weaver there. So even with the tower going down, I imagine Sox farm is not going to be affected whatsoever. Yeah, and the other thing is Liquid getting a tower is more important than Flipside getting a tower because Koikfa is rushing a Midas. That's true, too. And that's coming out faster. Yeah. So these trades also, to me, favoring Liquid a bit, but... Where Flipside's pulling ahead is they're farming better in the lanes. The Weaver, the Puck, as they should be with the aid of Living Armor and with Weaver having an empty lane. Winning the CS Wars here. Uh, and Bulba, because of the Courier Death, having a really hard time. But it has finally respawned. He's now going to bring out a Bracer, Boots, and we'll probably see that Phase Boots drum Dyer's build from him. Yeah. He seems to like kind of playing like a... Almost like a semi-carry Elder Titan, I want to say. The reason that he goes both for phase and drums is that the Astro match your movement speed on your hero. So the faster you move, the faster your Astro can move. And it matters quite a bit when you're trying to scout with it or trying to maybe get a couple of neutrals from the enemy jungle. And also you get extra speed when it comes back and then that's amplified by the percentage base increase from the, the drums and the phase boots. There you go. So Fluff now checking the top rune and let's see where it's going to spawn. It is going to spawn bottom. It's a haste, and um, the supports, they, they've done a decent job of catching up. They're only a level behind right now. It's not the end of the world for Flipside, and I guess the issue for Flipside right now is when do they start to get aggressive and actually control the map? They need items to do it. They need a Blink Dagger on the puck. Exist is getting close to his, uh, and they need level 6 on Clockwork, who is still a bit of a ways off. Yeah, Exist is farming spectacularly. I mean, I, we can't even chalk this up to a, a matchup disadvantage whatsoever. It's just really the Courier and the fact that Puck could bottle crow and, uh, excuse me, Bulba cannot. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Now the tower's starting to take some damage. The Swarm comes in. 
just holding the creep wave back so that the creep wave can, can continue to the radiant creep wave can continue to work on the tower. Nicely done. Let's see way to rotate towards mid. Nobody really there yet. Sakshka really showing that he fully understands the hero. Not just throwing the swarm out willy nilly, but mm -hmm. doing it when you can actually try and take the tower. There's no glyph here. This tower is gonna fall one way or the other. This fluff and stuff, not yet level six, they'll throw him back towards the tower, but oh. the last hit goes to Sakshka. Fluff might actually Beautifully be in trouble played. as well. Here he goes. Sakushi's no gonna swarm. go right in. No swarm just yet, but Gemini attack one more proc, he's gonna not gonna go up to kill. That is not worth it. That's yeah. That's the risk great. of somebody TPing in is Well more importantly, Fable would have just killed him. And uh, Fluff had it on cooldown, so. Yeah, nicely done. And they force a rotation from way too, so Fluff back to the jungle. That's two towers down. You compare that to flip side. Well, they only gave up one tower, and Miguel, off the back of that, he's now level 5. Keeping up with the Prophet, who had a very fast Tanamitis. Had it, like, around the 6, 6.5 minute mark. Looks like Puck was uh, eating a couple of orbs in the mid lane, taking a little bit of damage. But uh, with the bottle, he, he, again, will be fine. Looks like Eventual Spirit upgrading into a Tranquil Boot. Something I don't see personally too often, but it actually helps out uh, using that swap initiation quite a bit. Yeah, it lets you get in range, but you're talking about swap initiation. FA Mad is only level 4. The economic damage of the offlane profit still somewhat being felt. I think Matt just popped the smoke to dodge an Astro Radiance from chasing him. Tower. And it looks like he's going to be solo smoking to the bot lane. Oh, he's going to find an Invis in here and he walks right by it. He'll pick it up. Okay. This could be a big opportunity. Fluff and stuff in a oh, lot Fluff of trouble. Fluff is dead if, if they if see If he him. doesn't run right back to his tower, but he's I, they don't have a rune ward actually. Did Do you know if Bulba checked mm. it? No, no. Because Fluff must, he must know that the rune has been taken. Well, he actually Judging doesn't. He, he's just like, well, it's time to go back closer because I don't know what's going on. Or maybe he does. Well, maybe Bulba scouted it with the... Astral? He might have scouted it with the Astral. No, it's... Because Fluff's playing really passively. In any case, they are going to get a D ward on the mid lane. Um, one thing that Fluff talked to me about when I was doing the patch lock analysis with them is that a lot of pro players sometimes just have that spidery sense. When you play this on the high level, you know, you don't see the enemy heroes on the map. You kind of assume where you know where they are. Oh, but they're diving Fluff, Fluff right Fluff now. Sakshka's going to blow him up. No. Burst the Prophet will turn around. And all of a sudden, a wild Bulba appears in the lane. The wild Bulbasaur turns it around. They and get that, two kills. And that just gave both the supports level six. That's absolutely huge. Meanwhile, Puck having a ton of trouble on the top lane here. He's dropping low. He gets the living armor back up. And looks like they have killed Gyrocopter there. So... I think Liquid still perhaps down. They lost CC, but they got two level six supports. Yeah, they do have a profit free farming. Their other Titan's doing reasonably well, considering he's up against Living Armor and the Courier died. So, I, I yeah, I'd say maybe a slight edge to flip side, but only a slight one at that. Yeah. Well, you gotta keep in mind that Sock is, uh, as, apart from that one death, he's doing quite well. You got the tower lasted, you got uh, another tower kill. Just, you know, these CSU supports away. on Liquid are just so farmed. Way too already has arcane boots, and you're looking at a Triant who. I, oh, I guess he has arcane boots as well, but I don't know. He's not going to do as much with those as the Sand King is. How the stream has arcane boots? Oh, they, those two towers. Yeah, I the, they have the one tower advantage here, yeah. so it's a lot more farm on Way too. Alright, so Fluff and stuff. It's another solo smoke. He's going to the enemy jungle, probably placing a couple of deep wards, and he's uh, wrapping around to maybe set up a kill on Effing Mad. Effing Mad just wants that level 6, but not sure whether he's going to find one. Right now, a 10-minute rune spawns. It's bottom, and it's a haste, and Sakshka's about to pick it up. Fluff could oh. be in all sorts of trouble here. Oh, he does have spell steal, though. He could probably steal Sakuchi. Sakshka just waiting at the rune. It gets revealed. Now a lift and throws oh. him up under the cliff. Time, Time lapse. lapses right back out. <laughs> okay. Cute. That's fine. Didn't spell steal, though. Yeah, I guess he just wanted to keep a stun, which is not too bad. Magic Missile is decent. I think you'd rather have Sakuchi, though. Max Sakuchi is really strong. Yeah. I'm surprised that he didn't just lift, uh, steal, and then toss him. Either way, I, I mean, probably just one of those, holy shit, there's a weaver right here. <laughs> I better I better run. And Liquid now have great vision because of that. So actually I should maybe have an idea that there's some suspicious wards, because why else would Rubik be wandering around in this jungle? But nonetheless, Liquid, I think Liquid are the team that's more comfortable just sitting back and farming. To me, it's flip side. They've gone for a puck, a weaver, and a clockwork. Not really the best late game. They need to be the ones setting up kills, but it's hard to do it. Yeah, I really agree. The make game damage of Team Liquid is absolutely scary. You're looking at Wrath of Nature, at Epicenter, all amped up, and a call down, all amped up by that natural, uh, natural order. Like, that is so much damage from Team Liquid. So they're not even worried that this is going to mid to late. And if it gets really late, we'll call talk about it later as TC really in trouble top lane, dropping low, dropping fast. Migo's low. They are going to get a return kill on Migo, though. A one Not for really. one in the end, but they do lose the gyrocopter. Yeah. Prophet ult comes through as well, and now the push comes in on the middle lane. Exist and effing mad, they'll work on the tower, but.
Gonna take a while to kill this. Meanwhile, bottom lane, epicenter, burrow strike from way too sexy. Living armor's there, keeping him in fighting shape. He goes down. Even with all those instances of damage from epicenter, thoroughly tanked by that level three living I mean, armor. Did you see if, if tree was at four HP in the beginning? Oh uh, no, he was at like a third HP, maybe even a quarter. He was very low. Wow. But living armor did work. Living armor as well as leech seed. I mean, leech seed yeah. definitely did some healing there, and puck keeping keeping in, get, getting a kill, very nicely done. Yeah, and that, that was a saying he was farming quite well. He's up to a oh. level 8 already. Let's see, Radiant's Courier just got picked up. That's just Koifa. Yeah. Some, some stuff. Hey, Koifa's... Just drop it. Oh, he's gonna get... He's... Oh, he's that, in that's where, that's where he got Shadow the Blade. Courier killed. No, just uh, Shadow Amulet. Shadow just... Amulet, I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure he's gonna walk up here and then, like, oh, let me Midas a creep before TPing out. <laughs> no? Is he... Yeah. Koifa. He's just gonna run away. Nicely played. Meanwhile, Sashka, busy diving Bulba way deep in enemy territory. Can he actually do anything here, though? No, Bob no, was way too tanky. Not really. So, to me, the issue right now for Flipside is even when they're finding kills and maybe turning fights around, they don't get anything more. They're no, they don't take towers off of it. They're not getting multiple kills. They're not getting trackle. They don't have a bounty hunter. They're not really securing map control. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of it's just because of the Prophet and also the Elder Titan. Elder Titan just constantly pushing the lane with the Astral Spirit. The Prophet applying pressure all over the map. Now we see a rotation towards the bottom lane from Effing Mad. As Liquid begin to group up, Godblack could be in a bit of trouble. So too could Effing Mad. Already a Burrow Strike in to start. Now a call down to follow up. Something got stolen by Fluff. It's going to be a Leaf living Seed, a Living oh. Armor rather. Yeah. Even better for him to steal. And now Exist dropping as well. He teleported into the Elder Titan ult. It's going to be an absolute train wreck on this bottom lane. Four heroes dead. Make it five if Miguel falls. He's got a hook shot. Maybe can use it to oh, run. No, one hit. more swipe oh, of that massive hammer. This is why you go this build with your natural order, your phase, your your drums, and your natural order, or sorry, your astral movement speed increase. You're moving at max, and Bobo was just basically haste rooted and just walking around. Of course, Fluff ends up stealing leveling armor. Is, well, it's better to have a Rubik with living armor on your team than having a tree and protector. That's for damn sure. He's a lot more useful. <laughs> yeah. Has an actual lockdown spell in the lift and more AOE, damage too with you know, the Fade Bolt. Yeah. And now they're in a lot of trouble. You're looking at a Sand King who has 1900 gold, way too sexy, might have a 16 minute blink dagger on a four position Sand King. Yeah. That that you don't see very often. And and for, for once in Fluff and Sluff's life, he's actually buying warts as a support. He generally make IX Mike buys it and way too buy it. Well, I think the Sand King getting farm is a lot more yeah, important. Yeah, I, I agree. And it seems like, you know, Fluff doesn't actually need items. He's doing quite well without them. So this game is looking pretty dire for Flipside, to be honest. Again, like they just didn't draft a really strong late game composition. Their lineup's much more mid game centric. They lack damage unless they get really big items up. And Liquid have the better split push, the better farming lineup. Ooh, there will be a hook shot though. Living Hold armor. that thought. They've caught up Fluff and stuff here. Living armor comes through. He's still alive for now. He tries to lift him out, but he still gets blown up. Meanwhile, from the backside comes an Elder Titan stop, a call down. Follow up, turn around, kill, and even through the living armor, Miguel's just melting here. Oh my he God. needs a fresh set of cogs. The overgrowth is deployed, but Bulba throwing out the earth splitter. Then the tree chat keeps him in place. He explodes. They now pull Godblack back in. A few more right clicks. That's four dead. Epicenter, not really needed, but they'll throw it out anyway. And that's your blink dagger on Sand King. 15 minutes in. Bulba had a DD rune. I don't even think he needed it to get those kills. That's how hard he's hitting. And Liquid are just crushing through flip side right now. Am I, am I just overhyping Liquid when I when I think that they are probably the top two or I just I don't I don't think Flipside's draft really could deal with what Liquid had. I mean yes one thing you could say is draft and it looks like Way 2 is gonna drop down but the way I see it as as Way 2 is gonna make this a little bit longer and more difficult. I, I don't think he's gonna make it up. Oh no not another he courier wants his kill. Blink dagger, but he could just feed the courier away and they might end up killing oh. him as well. The orb comes through just off the mark with no. silence Courier dead and way too sexy dead. Worth. Well, hold the presses on best team in the West. <laughs> Perhaps. I Meanwhile, they're going in on Koik, but the dust gets deployed. He tries to shadow blade and run, but a swap into a stun almost gives them the runaround heading the other direction. Now trying to TP out, but quickly dealt with. Nice turn of events here for Flipside. But when they're finding kills, it's mostly just on the back of They're not big done yet. Team Liquid, Liquid is some next level direction fluff and stuff. He steals living armor. We'll have to give away very soon. Maybe. He's stick actually charges? gaining a ton of levels. Yeah. He's got stick charges on the run. Uses nah. the overgrowth. <laughs> I think he's done here. What else yeah. can he steal? Spell steals coming off cooldown. Overgrowth? Overgrowth? No. Earn charge taking so him down. Oh, no. In the end, he will fall. You know, I want to say that the top two best West team, and then they died three heroes in a row, so. 
I'll leave that point for another day. Yeah. <laughs> that was the second courier death. I, what he wanted to do was deliver his blink dagger and then just get out, but... I still not... Okay, let's say he got out with a blink dagger. Not it's still really not worth, worth the courier. The cur yeah, because yeah, he had already bought the blink as well. So At least he got it delivered before dying, or that could have hurt even more. I mean, I also... Again, I think it's just hard to judge off of this one game, and sure, I haven't gotten sure. to watch them too much, but... When they get their draft, yeah, this Elder Titan mid in particular for Bulba just feels like feels like he really gets more out of the hero than a lot of other players. Do. It's not just a draft, though. I feel like whenever there's one person getting caught out, it seems like somehow the entire team liquid, the rest of the team just descends on them. We well, saw. They, I mean, they have a Prophet, and Flipside was diving their tier 3 tower. No, 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 the Prophet was right here. Remember, Venge was getting caught here? And then, like, everybody showed up from multiple directions. So it was, it was well, know, they have a, they have a pretty mobile lineup. They in do, general. and they're definitely taking advantage of it. So, and that mobile lineup just got better, right? With the blink dagger sinking, level eleven as well. This epicenter is gonna hurt like hell. Listen, I'm I'm as big a liquid fan as the next guy. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed watch casting them at TI three, but they got to show me a little more, Lumi. They will. It's early. This, these are only they the group will. stages. Got to make it to the finals. Can Let's... I make a bold prediction? Okay. They're gonna come out of this group as the first seed. Okay, they're going to take down Navi again. Yeah, I'm going to call it. Fluff has stolen Sakuchi, so now things get easier. Man, this is a great game to play Rubik. Living Armor, Sakuchi, Swap Overgrowth. Most of clock spells are decent as well, so dang. This is a good, a good Rubik. Oh, but Fluff is going to get <laughs> caught out with the dust. He doesn't have time lapse to remove this, and he will take a fall. He throws Miguel up to the high ground before dying with his last breath. They could give him a TP or nope, can't get in range, but Exist could. If he so pleases, so orb up onto the high ground, pop a TP, but this is a lot of wasted time. Meanwhile, middle lane, Sashka, oh, he misses the swarm, maybe could have made it go on TC. They had Effie Mad in position for a stun, potentially for a swap, but now Bulba and Way2 TP in. They descend on the mid lane with three heroes. Yeah, Fluff is actually giving a quite a bit of kill now. I think this is like the third time he has roamed down the river without the support of his Sanking and just, you know, decided to place Ward. As a result, they are getting deep wards like this, this one over here. Earlier they had a ward deep over here, but you do pay, pay a pretty hefty price sometimes, and now he's maybe on it again once he's back alive and decides to go ward. I mean, those deep wards are great. I think more than anything just for sniping the courier, which you have a ward like that. They are still down on the courier snipe count, though. Yeah. Well, they shouldn't be. <laughs> they shouldn't be, because both of the times that Liquid lost the courier was more a misplay from them, whereas yeah. when Flipside lost the courier, that's just Nature's Prophet doing this thing. What are you going to do? Never use the courier? Right, right. It's pretty tough, so... Overall, Liquid's still a tempo and just kind of a game that, to me, favors them. Because they have, the again, better split push, better farming lineup. I think they scale slightly better with farm uh, mm -hmm. as well. But And having natural order means that generally you have the edge late game. But uh, it's still a game that Quantic, Mouse Quantic Flipside could turn around. They just need to keep on finding those good fights like they have so far. I think this is... Uh... I'm gonna say out here right now for anybody that's wanting to learn high level support, this is a replay that you could download. Get the replay, get the replay Dota 2 ticket, download the replay, and watch effing mad and fluff and stuff. It's like the ward war going on from both these guys, walking in deep, dropping, using smoke just to ward, de warding, all this, this stuff. Effing mad getting a little bit of farm right well, now, which will help him. You know what's the trump card in the ward wars? A gem. gem yeah. I'd like to see one pretty soon, uh, but I guess they haven't been able to farm yet with all those deaths on fluff. He hasn't gotten much, and Effie Mad just never got to farm this game. So, all those tree ants blocking his camps. <laughs> Ain't no fun. Well, somebody's really farm, and his name is Migo. He's going to have himself an Axe Scepter in about 700 worth of gold, and that means he's uh, going to pick off the supports nonstop. Yeah, this, is, this could be a lot of trouble for Liquid. They don't really have a great way to deal with Clockwork Initiation if it's on the right hero. Sand King can Burrow Strike out. Well, uh, actually, the cores can BKB. It's more just the Nature's Prophet and the yeah. the Rubik. Those are the two heroes that, if they get caught, are pretty much toast. I mean, at the same time, I and the, I think Miguel definitely needs a BKB as well. I, I thought he should have actually got BKB first in a game like this because he hook in and he's disabling for his team, but a Burrow Strike with the Natural Order comes out and you're watch, dead. Watch out bottom lane where an Invis exists is going to reveal way to smoke. TC heads one way. Now the puck blinks out. Very nervous. He will retreat. At the same time, even if you get a BKB, there is natural order, which is in some ways a lot scarier than getting stunned. Just I mean, getting four shotted by this other Titan. Yeah, you are going to get four shotted physically, but right now you're going to get four shotted physically plus the magical spells, which also gets amplified. So, oh, we'll see. I imagine I'll go back for a BKB now. Maybe a four staff as well. And for Liquid, they do need to get a little more farm on these cores. TC is looking a, honestly a bit poor. 
Uh, not really keeping up with the Weaver even, which you would Radiant's expect at this point. Tower. Yeah, they haven't. The one thing is they haven't really been stacking the Ancients at all. I mean, I, I feel like Radiant has done a better job protecting their towers. They're up uh, by one well, tower. One team is living armor, so yeah, yeah. That, that makes it a bit easier, I <laughs> yeah, guess. Like you said, they haven't been stacking the Ancients. TC's been... Actually, TC's got five kills and five assists. What is Weaver It feels like? like he should be a lot more far. Yeah, he just... It's not... I, he's not exactly... He's down by 20 CS, I guess. That's mostly it. Yeah. And your Weaver's not doing too shabbily either. Uh, I think Sox has gotten some tower last hits is the other difference. Yeah. Whereas I mean, I'm not it, sure TCS. It, it's only 700 gold. So it's not that big of a deal. Not the biggest deal. And now Liquid working on Roshan. Slowly Quake, but TC looking to bring this down. But Roshan against Flipside. This is a pretty good lineup to jump into the pit, to turn the fights around. And now they do have a gem on Effing Mad. They need to get some control over this pit. We'll probably see him look to D-War, but he'll need some help to do it. Walking in by himself is just a death sentence. Yeah, I think Flipside's really good at maybe scaring you away from the Roshan pit, throwing out wave of terrors, rockets, and things of that nature, and orbs. Um, at the same time, I'm not sure what our- Hulk shot in, they found Koikfa trying to farm those Ancients, and Miguel's gonna insta-kill him. Nicely done. Meanwhile, Sachka, living armor, is quickly removed by the Rocket Brush. Still TC giving chase. There's a- there's a- oh, he doesn't have his eggs yet. Just got the money for it. He'll buy it in case he goes down. But yeah, Liquid trying to trying to farm near the Roshan and, and stay in the neighborhood, but they pay for it. Nice yeah. hookshot. Fluff is trying to D-War, trying to find out how how they got the vision of uh, of Koifa, and I, I'm i not even sure. It probably is just a rocket, to be honest. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You are you know they're hanging around the Roche pit. They're probably farming the Ancients. Uh, I just caught him when he was hookshotting in. But mid lane, working on this tower. Bulba comes in with a BKB. They lift up Effie Mad. He's got the gem. Tries to swap himself out, but that's not going to save him. Gem hits the deck. Liquid now pursuing. Can they find anybody else? No, that's a big kill, though. That's a huge swing of gold. Dropping a gem. You, I mean, Effie Mad bought the gem. And that's so. Roche as well, most likely. I think so. They're this definitely going to really make a case for it. So Sokka is very, very low in terms of HP. There is Living Armor to heal him up, but yeah, they just have to forfeit Roche. It's just a support getting killed, but man, Liquid's going to find themselves a big break. Yeah, and the, getting this Aegis just lets Liquid accelerate their farm, be more aggressive around the map in terms of where they're going to farm. With no Miguel in posi position, and with the, constantly the middle lane being posted by the Astral Spirit, you can see it's just very difficult for Flipside to contest. Even if they had five, it would be hard. In comes your orb. Exist. Oh, he oh. wants to steal this Aegis. He misses the Roshan kill and he misses the Aegis. And already the Astral Spirit instantly damaging him as soon as he comes out of phase shift. No chance to blink. That no, he, was he, almost. I think he orb all the way in here and then blink the last feet. So he was dead. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, but that was some well, top lane here. Sock. A little bit of trouble. Time lapse and will retreat now. Fluff, no more detection on him. Way too. Does he they have, have any? Gem. No, they, they have, have the gem. gem. Yeah. Sakshka in a lot of trouble. He's got more Sakuchi. He'll use it now. Can they stun him? There's a burrow strike coming through. Sakshka dropping low. He's got stick charges. Won't be enough. Liquid, they have their cake and they eat it too. And taking Roche, getting the kill on the Weaver. And defending the middle lane. Yeah, Liquid. Things kind of falling apart here for Flipside. Liquid just threw everything at him. And you can see on Nature's Prophet is working close. He's almost got that uh, Orchid. And yeah, Lincoln Sphere is going to protect the Weaver a bit, but You can just long? sprout him and then immediately Orchid. Yeah, and and for that Puck, there's nothing protecting the Puck. Yeah, Exist is working towards a Scythe, but this is where you just look at Flipside, and now it's, it really starts to feel like they lack the damage. Even if Liquid had equal farm, they have natural order. So, sure, you've got your Venge's R uh, to work on with, but Effie Mad lives like three seconds in these fights, so the yeah. R is very quickly gone. And now Flipside's perhaps running out of momentum here. Liquid... The split push will accelerate. Their pickoff potential has improved dramatically. Haven't taken game one yet, but feeling more and more like it's their game to lose. Bulba's trying to deny that there's mid a, tower. There's an Ag's hook shot here. Bulba's got to be careful. Well, he does have BKB, but we'll see if Miguel looks to go. He's going to go. He's thinking about it. He misses. He misses and uh, maybe for the best that he missed there. Now a Burrow Strike comes in. Now the call down comes in. The Earth Splitter too. Miguel completely caught out. Brought down in a hurry. Well... Oh, they're not done yet. They're going to sprout as well. Silence up on the tree and protect their coil comes down here, but TC hitting fast. He's going to get one more kill. That's coil down as well. Team Liquid will take this tier one tower with ease. Exist blinking, phasing in and then jumping right back out, but he gets sprouted. And now swap to safety, but then the burrow straight comes <laughs> like through. One second. Insta give. Brought down too. Yeah, the natural order is doing the work. And natural order is OP. And this puck's coming in again, maybe even going for a tower deny, but uh -oh. it's too late for he's Exist. Dead. He's caught out. One more right click should bring him down. It comes from TC. Godlike double kill. Liquid overrunning flip side. 
A series of very unfortunate events for Flipside. In span of like one minute, Team Liquid just went up by like 5,000 gold. And it's going to be more than this because having the Aegis up, taking the tier 2 mid means they get to farm all over the map. They still have that stolen gem from earlier, so they'll have the map control. They already have the better split push. They already have the better farming lineup. It's only going to get really worse from here. Yeah. Uh, Team Liquid's going to back off, but not before farming the enemy jungle. I, I imagine... No, they're going to even push this tier 2 bottom, oh, it looks like. They're going to get so much. In fact, you can see TC just want the Treants parading behind him. Almost as a butterfly going to start working on the tower. And Weaver not going for an MKB, going for that Desolator build. So this butterfly will be very effective in these upcoming fights. They do have a swap, though. They also have a stun. He could BKB. He'll pop it right now. Turns around with the cooldown. The stop comes through. The overgrowth's there, but it does no damage. And Liquid, the team that's got all the damage they could ever wish for, they get two more. They'll get at least three with Effing Matt on the run. One more cleave of that hammer. That's three dead. That's Rex. This is too much. Yeah, that's and that is for... indeed GG. That was like the fastest turn I've ever seen in a pro game where the game looks relatively stable. Sure, Team Liquid was up by a tiny bit. They pick off one, two, and suddenly three towers, a Rex, and then GG being forced out. And let's not forget how this game started. It started with Bulba get letting the courier get killed mid and with uh, your, your stand in playing the buck making a great play, but yeah. they ended up giving the courier away twice just didn't matter they took two fast towers but they sort of just lost momentum from there and it felt to me like the slip side team just it's a little bit lacking in damage their supports oh sorry were a little bit too passive and uh just couldn't get as much done in the mid game as heroes like rubik sand cane and just the superior split push of this liquid lineup heck they had better team fight too because of natural order yeah i mean it's like we said repeatedly in fact every time you push down or you kill a tower or you kill a hero you need to push down a tower which Looks like got a ton of kills, but they never pushed down much tower behind that, so it doesn't really matter. Liquid will take a fairly convincing game number one. They had their mistakes, but overall it seemed like they had the sounder strategy and slightly better execution on top of it. Uh, or much sounder strategy and somewhat better execution, I guess you could say. So, mm -hmm. they march into game two with a one-game advance. They need to take one more, and if they do, they move on to play Navi. It'll be a rematch of that uh, Champions League match where Liquid ended up prevailing 2-1. Can yep. they do it again? That's going to be the big question. Well, they haven't beat Flip, flip Side yet, so, and I, I don't think uh, Epic Man is out of strats. He's uh, he's someone that you could always count on to, to bring a crazy strategy and maybe steal even two games, so yeah. we'll have to wait and see. We'll see what's up his sleeve, and at long last, Flip Side will lose game number one. So Throne dies, and Team Liquid showing some really strong form. They've, they've been on a roll lately. What else is there to say? Yeah. Good draft, good plays. Definitely not flawless play, but good overall, feats. quite impressive. Good career feats. Yeah. <laughs> Count Boba to throw away some early game lead. Well, he was just trying to spot them a little bit, you know, make things make things interesting. He spot the entire Oh, Boba definitely did that. Man. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be live with game number two. It's Mouse Quantic Flipside, now trailing Liquid 01 in the best of three. Stay tuned.